have run our data store emulator and we have our dev app server working we can kind of take a look at this application and you know this is a really really simple uh you know this is a really basic application uh we're going to call this thing one um what this does is it, it allows us to create some things and save some things and delete some things so it is as simple as we can possibly get for uh demonstrating the uh the cloud data store so there we have thing one and then we have uh we can enter second thing and we can create that and we could say this thing is third and we can create that particular item as well and we can edit these we're going to click edit and we're going to we'll call this oh we screwed up maybe we want to call this thing two so we'll, we'll, we'll update that uh, and you can see now that's thing two and maybe we want to delete the third thing we can delete that so you can see the different operations that are available here and uh, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and look at the code now so that we can see what actually happened so let's move over to our, our uh, console and we're going to finish our, our tutorial from the last step and we're going to get into our editor now and we're going to close everything down that we've seen before uh, we'll get into step nine in GAE project and here you can see we have a, a couple of a uh, couple of spots where we're entering it's usually a good idea just to take a look at the app.yaml to, to understand what's running and you can see we have a static files folder that we're mapping to the URL URL s uh, we also have a requirements file. Note that here, we didn't actually set the Flask version. Uh, from here out, I think that we'll probably just have, uh, we'll have requirements files that ask us for the latest version, ask to install the latest version. So this says that we need Flask and we need Cloud Data Store, but we don't, we don't really specify the version here. We're just gonna use whatever the latest one is. So from here, app.yaml, you can see we're going into we're going to auto or automatically choose a script. So we're going to pick out main.py. And uh, if you take a look at main.py, uh, a couple of things you'll see. One is we are importing Flask. It's pretty normal. We've done that a couple of times. We're also importing data store from Google.cloud. Uh, so and and you can see we're we're, we're sort of uh, generalizing some things in this file. So we have a get client. And this will allow us to retrieve uh, uh, the data store client for our particular project. Now you can set a project ID if you have a different uh, if you have a different uh, Google Cloud project set up for your data store. You probably won't have that configuration, but it is an option. Um, and then we have a couple of different uh, functions that we've defined to create things and to retrieve things and update things. So we've sort of moved some of those things away. But let's go ahead and take a look at our app route for uh, for the basic root application so you know when you actually go to the the root of this application and hit enter what do we do so the thing that we're doing here is we're, we're, we have show things so we have this show thing function th show things function that we've defined and this show things function is going to retrieve a list of things and it's going to render a template with those things so here let's take a look at things so we have a result uh, list we're setting that equal to an empty list we're going to retrieve that client we're going to construct a query here for our kind. And it looks like here you can just see we used an entity type name. It could be anything, but you can see that that's, a, that's the kind that we chose here. And then we're going to retrieve all of them. So we're not actually filtering anything here. We're just uh, retrieving everything. And for each one of these entities in the query, we are going to append that to our result and then we're gonna return our result. So we have the things list. Uh, which is going to give us all of the things that exist. Um, we're not actually doing any filtering, and then we're gonna render that in the template. So let's go ahead and take a look at that template. So index.html is gonna be a normal, uh, it's gonna be a normal Flask template here, and we're gonna have, uh, it's gonna extend base. We should probably take a look at that. So you can see here the base template just sets our style sheet, uh, sets our title, gives us a header, and then uh, we have this content block here that's gonna show us uh, the, the, the content you know this is what's going to be replaced and if we go back to index this is kind of the entire page we're putting all that content in so for each one of those things we're now going to show the text property for that thing uh, you know again these are sort of dictionary type of objects so they'll you'll see text uh, will be the the title or the the value that we set for that thing and then we have a, a edit which we're we're constructing a URL here uh, for for edit purposes so take a look at this on line 9 we're sending this to an edit thing page uh, and we'll take a look at that page just momentarily but you can see we're, we're constructing a get request here with the ID equal to thing dot ID now if you go back to our Python code all of the IDs here are going to be integers when you know we're not specifying this when we create it when we when we create a thing we're, we're specifying the type of it but we're not actually specifying the the ID value so it's going to be generated by uh, by the uh, by the data store itself 
So when we actually get the things, and you'll see if we go back to our page here, uh, when we get the things, you'll see each one of them has a, has a particular ID. And if you hover over this, you can kind of see the information at the bottom. We can also view the page source. We're just gonna right click and view page source here. And here you can see, well, the first one is ID equal one, and the second one is ID equal two, and it can do that because it's just an emulator. If you do this in production, if we deploy this and start working with it, you'll see these are actually gonna be uh, much, much longer IDs. Um, but you can see this is constructing that URL. So now when I click this and hit edit, you'll see the URL here is just edit thing ID equals one. So if we go back to that index.html uh, index file, uh, you'll see this URL that we construct is actually show, it's, it's replacing that, I, that, that ID, this, this uh, little bit here in the curly braces, we're taking that out uh, from the, the thing uh, and we're actually putting that into the HTML. So now we can edit and delete with those particular IDs. Uh, and you know, in the four, uh, if we use an else, like if we don't have anything, if we haven't uh, saved anything yet, you'll see this message here, just showing us that there were no, no values, no, uh, no objects, no entities in this things uh, list. So, and then we have this form at the bottom that we saw on the page. So when we get to that root page, here you go, you can see we have the, the form at the bottom and then we have each one of the things here uh, listed in, in each one of these areas. So that's kind of how we, we retrieve the things and display them, but we might also want to create them. So when we create a thing, uh, you'll see, in, if we go to the route for that, when we go to uh, create thing, um, this is gonna work with both post and get methods. So we're not gonna limit the, uh, the user from uh, any particular approach here. Uh, you, could, you could submit a post request or a get request. We're going to retrieve the value, uh, that text, uh, that text um, input, and we're going to create a new thing we're going to set its text property to text and then we're gonna update that thing. So the update thing, uh, if we take a look at that code, it's just gonna get the client and then put it. So there's not much to that. Uh, and the create is just going to get the client, create that key, and then uh, return that entity associated with that key. So we create with one step, we update with the other step, and it just uh, it's all gonna be saved properly. Um, now, when we retrieve these, you can see we're, we're again we're just using uh, we we just use the ID. So if we look down at say the edit thing page uh, here, we're going to retrieve the ID that came from the get uh, the the get pro, uh, or the get request. So we're going to retrieve that uh, ID, and then we're going to get the thing using retrieve thing. So we have the ID, we've saved it. We're going to go up to uh, to re to the retrieve thing. And notice we're using the ID. Um, this is a really important call out here on lines 25 and 26. If you use int, then it's gonna, it, the int and the string, even if they look like the same value, an int is gonna give you a different, uh, is gonna give you a different entity. So when we retrieve this parameter uh, down here in edit thing, when we, re when we retrieve this parameter from, the, from uh, the, the get request or from the post request, uh, what we end up with is a string. So we wanna make sure that when we retrieve the thing, uh, we actually want it to be an integer. So we, we, for, we uh, use that, that function to make sure that we get an integer there. And then uh, we're just gonna retrieve that particular thing. Updating works the same. Uh, updating works the same way. Deleting, uh, let's take a look at that. In the delete page, when we delete a thing, uh, you can see here we're going to retrieve that that value, the ID again. We're going to get that, and we're going to call this delete thing uh, function. So if we go back to delete thing, you can see here uh, we're going to retrieve a client. We're going to construct that uh, key, and then we're just going to use that data store client to delete it. So you can see here we've got the ability to retrieve, we've got the ability to create, we've got the ability to update, and we've got the ability to delete. And it's all through just a few very simple uh, API calls using this data store client or using the entities themselves. So this is a pretty basic application, but you know it does work, and you know we can create as many of these as we like. You know we can we can uh, have several of them. We can delete. We can edit. We can uh, we can uh, mess around with this for a while. But it should illustrate the very basic ideas behind uh, saving, retrieving, uh, updating, and deleting the entities that you're creating using that data store API. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to use this. Hopefully, it will allow you to start saving data in your no own applications. But uh, thank you for watching, and I hope that uh, that you, you you learned something from this video.